I'm certainly glad that y'all can be with me this morning. We have a case that I think clearly indicates why this gang task force that we just put together with all of the police departments. Roger Hanberg, our U.S. Attorney, Brian Haas, our State Attorney, who is just simply the very best. Our Ashley Moody, our Attorney General, and ATF, FBI, FDLE. If this doesn't illustrate why we need to do what we're doing with this task force, I don't think anything does. Because as we said then, and I'm going to repeat often today, we're not going to allow kids to shoot kids or kids to be shot or people to be shot by kids. We're just not going to do that. Everyone is God's children, whether they are behaving or not, and they have a right to be safe. I'm going to introduce you to a victim. As you know, Marcy's Law doesn't allow us to give victims names unless there is an agreement. Well, the victim's mother wants us to use his name and to even talk about his history because she is so passionate about trying to stop this from occurring to any other mother's child. The victim's John McGee. He's 33 years of age. Now, he is an adult by every sense of the word, but he's still his mama's baby. He's still her child. She admits readily that he has misbehaved throughout life and that he has conducted himself in a manner that she does not approve of, and she's told him that. He's known as Bang Bang. That should give you an idea of who our victim is and he's a known gang member. I want you to understand that he was released from prison on October the 8th. October the 8th, he was released from prison where he did four or five years. He's a troublemaker, make no mistake about it, but he shouldn't have died. But on December the 17th, December the 17th, just more than two months after he was released from prison, he was shot in the back. He was shot. He was on Pirate's Way, and that's in Secret Cove off of Skyview. And here's what we know. When he was originally shot, went to the hospital, he was expected to recover. We started the investigation. And as the investigation went on, 24 days later, he died in the hospital. Now, some of you may say, well, what kind of hospital care was that? They were giving him the best hospital care. But as he started to get better, he refused to take the medicine that they said he had to have in order for his body to heal. Now, during this period of time, we're talking with him because we're trying to determine who shot him. He would not cooperate. What little bit he said, he lied to us, and he lied to us, and then he refused to take his medicine. So we're up at the hospital now, not only as detectives, but trying to say, hey, dude, you have got to take your medicine. He was going to get well and go back and seek revenge on his own against this other opposing gang member. That's right. What we believe is he wanted to take care of it himself. He didn't want that gang member locked up because if he was locked up, he couldn't get to him. So he begins to decline over this 24 days. And the sicker he got... The more he refused the medicine, the more we talked to him, he took to his death the person that shot him. But he shouldn't have been shot. Why was he shot? Well, it was an opposing gang member, I call it 
uh, a testosterone overload. He was mean mugging. He was bad eyeing the other gang members. And as a result, the event occurred. Well, who shot him? Interestingly enough, I'm going to spend a few minutes on this because this illustrates the problem. This is Ladarian Chandler. Ladarian is 19 years of age. He's a self-proclaimed rapper. And he shot John McGee in the back as he ran away. And then he made a rap video about it. Now, first off, come on, man. You shoot someone else in the back? What kind of coward is that? But that's exactly what he did. So before I go further, other than to tell you there was an argument in the street, he shot him in the back. Let me tell you about Ladarian Chandler. He was on juvenile probation even though he was 19 years old. He previously had seven felony arrests, five misdemeanor arrests, everything from resisting to theft to vehicle theft. He was just a mess. But here's a picture of him. I want you to see this picture. This is when he was 18 years of age. And this was after he was released from a high-risk facility where he spent one year in jail. But let's go back. When was his first arrest? When he was 11. Then he was arrested when he was 13, 14, 15, and 15, and 17. The Department of Juvenile Justice, who I often say has a difficult time telling a child the difference in a child committing childish acts that are criminal and a hardcore criminal as a juvenile. This was a hardcore criminal as a juvenile, but to DJJ's credit, they had him in detention, incarcerated on three different occasions. The first time for one month, that didn't do any good. The second time for two months, that didn't do any good. The third time for 12 months, that didn't do any good. This photograph was taken within a day or two or a week after he was released from his third stint in lockup. He never learned. Not only that, 32 days later, after this photo, that's when he shot John McGee, 32 days later. Did I mention that this bad-looking dude, and he was bad and mean in the streets when he had a gun, because he would point it, he would threaten, he would shoot. This is only the times we know about. We don't know about the drive-bys and the shootings that never got reported to us, because a lot of times they don't talk. Most times, they don't talk. We don't know about all of those times. But what we know is, despite the juvenile justice system effort to the contrary, this is what he looked like the week after he was released. And 32 lit days later, he shoots John McGee, who subsequently dies. Now, let me give you some background. We're doing our investigation. We find out that he has made this rap video. I gotta tell you what, he's not much of a rapper. My rapper expert tells me he doesn't sing well, he doesn't move well, you know, he's just a terrible rapper. But he's a stupid rapper because, you know, he not only makes him a rap video about shooting somebody, he admits shooting the guy in the back. 
I'm a coward rapper. That's what I am. If you don't believe me, watch me shoot the guy in the bat. What? What? What is that all about? I got lots of stuff I could talk about that. But it, Yo, I, my, my rapper expert is some of my detective, one of my detectives who loves rap music and he's into it and he self-proclaimed, kind of like the rapper, that this was one of the worst rappers he's ever listened to in his entire life. So we investigate further and nobody in the neighborhood knows anything. You go, out, you go to one of these scenes, you know, there's 200 people in the parking lot, and you talk to them all, and they all just got out of the bathroom. I was in the bathroom when that happened. You know, 200 people in 20 bathrooms. It's crowded, but that's where they are. But we started making arrests. And as we started making arrests, we even arrested a mama along the way. As we started arresting people, when we got mama arrested, when we started back in there for another wave of arrest, they went, uh, we'll talk to you. So people started loosening up. My homicide detectives are simply the very best, and they were started to give us information. Now, follow me here. This shooting occurred on, what, December 17th. He dies about a month later. It takes us two and a half months to build the criminal case. But just after, while, while, while we're doing this, he pulls a gun on another guy in Secret Cove, Pirate's Way, the same street, just a few, a little ways over. Fortunately for us, because we hadn't, didn't have a case, wasn't even real sure, because there were several people around, who the trigger man was at that point. Fortunately, he didn't kill that guy. But patrol arrested him for that case and put him in jail. So he was easy for us to find when we wanted to serve the first-degree murder warrants on him. When we served the first degree murder once on him, he wanted to be bad. I'm, I'm a bad man. He is, and he's legitimately bad when he's got a gun, but I'm a bad man. I'm not talking to you. I'm not cooperating. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you're bluffing me. You know, you ain't charging me with nothing. You don't have anything. Well, when we laid that first degree murder warrant on him, subsequent to that, he started crying like a baby that lost his pacifier. And ostensibly, his gun was his pacifier. He bragged that he carried a gun all the time, and he would shoot his rivals. Now, he didn't call them rivals, but you'll have to listen to the video and add your own words, because we've blanked out some inappropriate words that he used. But now he's charged with first-degree murder. So I ask you this. He had to be cool. He had to make his rap videos. He sent this out for other kids to see. And that's what's happening in this rap world today. That's why we have these drive-by shootings. That's why we have these kids ganging up in their individual gangs. Then they don't talk to us because they're going to go back and revenge the conduct themselves. While this shooting's taking place, and we're dealing with this, and there's a shooting in Lakeland where 11 are shot, and we're dealing with one in Lake Wells, where two, a 12 and a 14-year-old and a 19-year-old girls are shot in two different houses asleep in the middle of the night, and one gangster shoots and kills another gangster in Ponciana. You go, my gosh, what's, a, what's a, the matter here? Despite, despite that, our crime's at a 51-year low. Despite that, our violent crime went down last year. 
So what I'm saying is this does not represent the overall crime picture. This represents a very violent, dangerous group, small group of gangsters that are shooting at each other, and they're young. So look at this kid. He's 19. He's going to prison for the rest of his life. And I want all you cool dudes to think about this. While you're watching your gangster rap and you're looking for a stolen gun and you're shooting at your buddies and your buddy's house and your buddy's car, when you're shooting, this guy thought he was going to be you or you're going to be him, and now he's going to prison for the rest of his life upon conviction plus his other aggravated assault charge in possession of a firearm by a convicted juvenile. He's not even supposed to have a gun at all. So he wants this to be the image. And truly, folks, you understand why people would not testify against him in court. You understand why witnesses didn't want to come forward, because he carried a gun and he would shoot you and cared less. We've not recovered the firearm for the shooting. We like to tell folks, hey, we'll pay $500 for a felon with a firearm. Call Crime Stoppers, 1-800-226-TIPS. But we want the gun. We want the gun that's being pushed around. We know it's being pushed around. We want the gun that killed John McGee. Now, you're going, hey, how likely am I to give you the gun? I'm a convicted felon. Because that's who I'm sure has the gun. Well, it's easy. You call Crime Stoppers. And we will arrange a way to get the gun so that you don't get involved and you make $5,000 for the murder gun. That's right. I'll pay $5,000 for the murder gun. And I don't care who the gangster is holding it or who the mama is holding it. Get it out of the attic. Get it out from under the tree. Get it out from under the bed. Get your $5,000. All we want is to put our hands on the gun, and we'll take it from there. No questions asked. You don't have to get involved. And any other gangsters, felons with guns, you call in. We take them off. In our first week of operation with the gang task force, we got four guns off the street, Two of them are in the computer is stolen. I know the other two are stolen. We're just having to trace them from their origin because people didn't have the serial number when it was reported to us. But let the message be loud and clear. And all you gangbangers and gangsters and cool dudes and dudettes, understand. We ripped this rapper and he's in the jail. We unwrapped him from coolness and wrapped him up in a jail cell. And I don't know how you put that in a rap video, but if you do, send me a copy. And then verse 2, you're next, dude. You're next. Because we're not going to let you kill people, and we're not going to let people kill you because we care about your life. That's a guarantee. So with that, let's look at the rap song and we'll make this available to you but you can see him guns all guns play that again Bragging about it. Any questions? So, um, so the evidence you have against Chandler, which is a huge relief, 
is the fact that there's parts of that rap video that weren't publicly known? That's part of the video. At the time he made that video, only the shooter would have known he shot the guy in the back. And we have lots of other evidence that we're not revealing here today. And then another question, just it strikes me that the victim had a mother who cared about him, didn't want him in that life anymore, and we have this 19-year-old kid who's young. Um, you know, how does the, the gang task force try to get young people, young kids, not to go into this? Listen, that, that's a bunch of hooey, that soft and cuddly feeling we're going to hug a thug and if we give them you know another popsicle and an icy and a day out at the park they're going to be good y'all need to wake up these dudes are taking y'all for fools these are hardcore gangsters gangbangers they'll eat your ice cream on saturday and shoot up the rivals on saturday night and smile at you in the meantime so at the end of the day, it all starts with parenting at home when they're young and keeping them away from this lifestyle. But when, when we're having these neighborhood events for these 15, 16, 17-year-old hardcore gangbangers, they're smiling at you in the daytime and going up and dressing like this at night. He was still on probation. He did a shooting after the curfew was over. How much good did that do? They're not this kind of person. I'm not talking about everybody. This kind of person is paying no attention because they want to be cool. They want to be rappers. They want to be a power player in their community. So I tell everyone, you got the little bitty dudes and dudettes at four and five and six. Don't let them watch this crap because that, that appears to be cool. It's not cool. I want to hear your thoughts on DJJ reform. You know, last week we were talking about uh, Orange County. Several people shot and killed one of those, a news reporter, and the conversation came up of needed change in that area. This seems to tie in as well. Well, first and foremost, you know, DJJ is an easy target, okay? So every pi everybody piles on DJJ, and, I, and I've piled on them too, because you have this wave of people, and I call this wave of people of community, I call them do-gooders, because they really mean well, their heart's in the right place, and they just think if we hug them closer, that that's going to make everything better and all this will go away. Well, if that were so, because we are hugging these people, this kid got the full measure of the system. We also have the ability to put them in adult system. But when you look at all of his crimes, they weren't all gun crimes. They were theft and grand theft and fleeing and not your greater level stuff. But he was a scary guy on the street. But as I've said before, what we have to do is we have to be very forgiving of children committing cr acts that are of a criminal nature. Those are the ones that need the diversions and the counselings and the counselings and the families re reinforced. I'm not saying that does not work. But when they cross that border, then they have to be detained. If this guy is not locked up, he's shooting somebody. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. So G DJJ many times allows these very violent kids or very outlandish, out of control criminal kids. They don't all have to be violent crimes. They, they don't sometimes tell the difference between a, a child doing a childish act that's criminal and a hardcore criminal who happens to be under the age of 18. This was a hardcore criminal under the age of 18. 
But if you look, our state attorney is great about filing adult charges, but he just meandered through the system and never got above what should have been controllable. And the system with him detained him for one month, and then two months, and then one year. What would have happened if we had started out with a year program and then went to another year program and then went to another year program? You see, he might not have been out to commit this crime because you, you can still be held under juvenile sanctions up until the age of 24. But now he gets out at 18. He does not have a high school education. He has no proclivity to work because he's just going to ra do rap videos and sell dope on the street corner and run with the dudes and be, co be cool. And now he's facing the rest of his life. Now, I can go back sociologically and say, well, how was he, what environment did he have when he was two and he three and he was four and he was 10 and he was 12? And I'm not saying that doesn't need to happen to try to stop it in advance. I'm not against that, but when he got to this level, he ain't eating no more ice cream with y'all. I'm just telling you. He's not eating any more ice cream with you. But he's still a 19-year-old kid that now has taken a life. And that's why Mrs. McGee, or John McGee's mama allowed us to use his name. She said, I don't want any more mamas to lose their children. And I'm appreciative of her. And I'm sorry for her. I'm sorry for this kid's mama. But she's thuggish too if this is, or, or either, the, the, either the friend's mama's thuggish. I forget which one of them. But when you raise your kid or don't raise your kid, the streets will raise your kid. But it'll be violent. You sure don't want to meet this kid. And they said he had a bad temper. He's got a bad temper. He's got a gun. He's 19 years old. And he'll shoot. And he says he'll shoot in his rap videos. And he tells the people in the neighborhood he'll shoot. Now, he's not the only one out there. That's why we got this gang task force. Is it a large population of people? Not yet. And we're not going to let it get that way. But the reality of it is, This guy should not be in a position to have to be in jail for the rest of his life. But I guarantee you this, you let him out, he's going to get him a gun the next week and take pictures of himself and post it while he's on probation. Then he's going to go out after curfew. Anything else? I think I've clearly communicated the problem here. And I hope to the gangsters, I've clearly communicated our answer. So if you're smart, you go get you some ice cream on Saturday when they want to give you ice cream, and you won't thug up and start shooting people Saturday night. Thank you very much.